Hello everyone. Back again with film recaps. In this video, I'm going to recap one of a thriller films from 2022, titled No Exit. Before we get to the storyline, I'd like to wish everyone a happy and great day. Without further ado, let's get straight to the storyline. The film opens inside a rehab center, where a group of recovering addicts sit in a circle sharing stories. A nurse then walks in to inform that there is an urgent phone call for a woman named Darby. She goes to answer it and is informed by a relative that her mom had an aneurysm, and is at the hospital in Salt Lake City right now, accompanied by her sister Devon. Darby understandably worries. Later that night, she sneakily makes a call to her sister, Devon, and we learn that their relationship is rocky. Devon does not even want to see Darby, and Darby doesn't care. She decides to escape the facility by stealing a car and drives off. On the way, she pulls over by the side of the road and we see a flashback of her dark past, where her sister and mother found her overdosed inside of a car. And then... You okay, man? Back in present time, the officer proceeds to tell her that all the roads are closed because a storm is coming, and that Darby should wait it out at the visitor center nearby. Darby relents and heads there. Once she arrives, she finds that there are several other people who are waiting for the storm to pass too. She goes to the restroom and looks at the messages her sister sent her, basically telling her not to come to the hospital. Stressed out, Darby pulls out a small bag of cocaine, but decides to not take it. Later on, Darby decides to step out to the parking lot to look for phone service, when this happens. She walks towards the noise and realizes that there is a child tied up inside. Darby tries to open the door but finds it locked, so she decides to take a picture of the license plate instead, and tells the child she'll be back before entering her own car. Darby tries calling 911 but there is no service at all, so she heads back inside. She looks around at the people around her, realizing that the culprit must be someone in the room. Once she sits down, she gets introduced to Sandy the former nurse, and her husband Ed the ex-marine, Lars the socially awkward, and Ash the charming one. Ed proposes that they should play a card game to kill time. All of them sit in a circle to play the card game, and Darby pretends to make small talk by asking questions about their origins, and where they are headed. While in truth she is actually trying to figure out who the kidnapper is, because the license plate at the back of the van is from Nevada. Darby tenses in her seat when she learns that Lars is from Nevada. At the same time, Lars is losing the card game they're playing, and does this. It is clear that he is mentally unstable. Darby uses this opportunity to excuse herself, and enter an out-of-order restroom to text 911 about the child abduction, and even goes as far as sending them the picture of the license plate, however, there still isn't any service. Realizing she has to take matters into her own hands, Darby rises and takes out a plank from the wall with a hammer, revealing a hole she can crawl through. She circles her way around and makes it back to the van, this time managing to unlock the door with a thin metal bar and climbs inside. While trying to untie the child, she takes note of the medical alert bracelet on the child's wrist. But then... That's a bad beat, huh? Devon covers herself with a blanket while Lars begins talking softly with the child, and we learn that the child's name is Jay. Lars pauses when he realizes something. What the hell? Don't touch the cardboard, okay? Here Darby learns that Lars has a gun tucked inside his back pocket. Lars sits back down and begins talking about a man named Uncle Kenny, to whom he is taking Jay. He then exits the van while saying that he's going to grab some snacks for Jay to munch on. Realizing they don't have much time, Darby leaves a box cutter with Jay and exits the van, and slips back to inside the restroom. Upon arriving by the side of the van, Lars notices a set of footsteps on the snow, and becomes suspicious. Meanwhile, a worried Ash begins knocking on the restroom to check on Darby. But before Darby manages to tell him what's going on. Uncomfortable, Lars leaves, and Darby begins telling Ash about the little girl tied up inside the van, and that Lars must suspect that she knows now. Ash looks worried. So he takes a nail gun from the tool cart inside the room and comes up with a plan. The plan is for Darby to step outside again, this time while making sure that Lars is following her. While Lars is gone, Ash is supposed to tell Ed the ex-Marine about what's going on. However, 
Once Darby makes it back inside the van. But where are the men? Jay innocently asks, where are the men who took her, signifying that there is more than just one kidnapper. How many men? Two. Darby looks outside and finds Ash and Lars talking to each other. Ash takes the handgun while Lars takes the nail gun. They plan to ambush Darby. Darby sneaks back inside the building, so Ash and Lars make their way back inside too. Ash corners her and takes her phone. He deletes the unsent messages Darby tried to send to 911 earlier, and opens the messages sent by Darby's sister. He then learns that Darby's family dislikes her, and do not wish for her to come to the hospital. Meanwhile, back in the front hall, Ed begins to suspect something's amiss. He steps outside to check things out. Ash begins questioning Darby, asking intrusive questions about her family. He even goes as far as to ask about the manner of Darby's father's death, and the terrified Darby reveals that her father shot himself. He then morbidly begins pointing the gun to her head while asking which part of the head was shot. Darby calls him a child molester, and in protest, he reveals that he's strictly doing this for money, because Jay's father is wealthy and would pay a lot for his child's safe return. He also tells her that Jay suffers from Addison's disease, meaning she might OD on adrenaline, so Darby intervening to save her wasn't helping. Inside the van, Jay has begun removing the duct tapes that bind her, using the box cutter Darby left her, right when Ed comes by the van and begins trying to open the door. This time for some reason, Jay doesn't make a sound. Back to Ash and Darby, they get interrupted by Sandy, who asks to speak to Darby alone. Before he leaves, Ash threatens Darby to not tell anyone, otherwise he will kill everybody. Terrified, Darby doesn't tell Sandy what's going on, even though Sandy notices how shaken she is. Instead, Darby diverts the topic by asking about brain aneurysms, and whether or not her mother may survive. The two women walk back to the front hall later, and move to sit together with the men. Not long after, Darby notices that Jay has untied herself, and made her way out of the van. Ash and Lars notice this too, so Lars heads outside to go after the child. Ed and Sandy, however, still seem completely unaware. Darby heads back to the restroom, so Ash excuses himself and goes after her. And then this happens. The two begin scuffling and because he is stronger, Ash manages to gain the upper hand. He moves to choke Darby. Luckily, Lars arrives just in time before Ash manages to seriously harm Darby. Lars informs him that the child has escaped to the hiking trail and they have to go after her. The two kidnappers then force Darby to go look for the child with them. You're gonna find her, all right? Get far. Yeah. While they hike the trail to look for the child, Darby refuses to cooperate. She points the flashlight in their eyes to catch them off guard. Shocked, Ash shoots his gun and she moves to avoid it, but she begins rolling down the hill in the process. Back inside the building, Ed and Sandy heard the gunshot and Ed heads outside. Darby crawls to hide while Ash and Lars look for her. Luckily, she manages to slip out of sight. Meanwhile, Ed stumbles upon an unconscious Jay, and hurriedly carries her inside. Ed and Sandy immediately learn that the child suffers from a medical condition, upon seeing the bracelet on her wrist. Just in time, Darby makes her way back inside, and finally reveals to them what's going on. Ash and Lars arrive in front of the building not long after, and begin yelling. Hey! Give us the girl, and no one gets hurt. Ed blocks the front door with chairs to buy time, and upon realizing that the two kidnappers are coming nearer, Ed yells. Walk through that door, I will shoot you dead. As a result, the kidnappers pull back, and begin arguing about whether or not Ed is bluffing. Inside, we learn that Ed doesn't actually have a gun. The kidnappers come up with another tactic. They begin yelling that the girl is ill, and they have the medication with them. Inside, Sandy the former nurse wavers. She tells the other two that the kidnappers are probably right, because Jay looks so pale already that she might die. Ed and Darby refuse to give in, and Darby reveals that she has stolen the kidnappers' car keys. Realizing that they have another bargain piece, Ed yells at the kidnappers that they are willing to exchange the medicine with car keys. Medicine? For the keys! Pissed, Ash and Lars head back to their van. However, they're not carrying medicine when they walk out. Instead, they have a gas can with them, 
signifying that they're going to burn down the building. Ed tells Darby to hide all the car keys, because the kidnappers won't kill them if they can't leave the premises. Meanwhile, the kidnappers begin pouring gasoline all over the building's facade. Sandy is palpably terrified. She takes out a pepper spray to arm herself. While all this is going on, Jay the child wakes up and says to Sandy, Is this Lowry? <sighs> As it turns out, Jay and Sandy know each other. We are then taken to a flashback scene, where it is revealed that Sandy works as a maid in Jay's house, and Jay bullies her. We also learn that later on, when Jay is getting kidnapped and screaming for help, Sandy does nothing to save her. We also see a scene where Sandy is talking to Ash on the phone, with Ash yelling at her about not being able to find the girl's medicine, and that Sandy has to bring the medicine to them so Jay doesn't die. Back in present time, he doesn't have a gun! Sandy yells. Sandy then pepper sprays Darby in the eyes, and the kidnappers enter the building at last. Ash hands Sandy the medicine and tells her to administer it to the child. Afterwards, Sandy, Ash and Lars get into a confrontation. At this point, we learn that Ash and Lars were never going to return Jay back to her parents, and that they don't care about the ransom. They are actually part of a child trafficking ring, and they're going to sell Jay to someone else. Sandy is shocked and begs them not to do it but is too fearful to fight back, so she tells them to just take the child and go, and reveals to them that Darby hid the car keys somewhere out back. But Ed voices his objection, and then... Darby tries reaching for the pepper spray on the ground, but Ash literally beats her to it. He then walks up to Sandy who is not yet dead, and finishes the job. After that, Ash drags Darby, and nails her to the wall with a nail gun. He then approaches Lars who is crying because he's got pepper spray in his eyes. They head to the restroom to clean Lars up, leaving Darby nailed to the wall. Darby holds in her pain and tries pulling her wrist off the wall, but is unable to go through with it because it is too painful. She finds a hammer nearby, and tries to reach it but it is too far from her. She decides to ask for Jay's help. Meanwhile, Ash is helping Lars get the pepper spray out of his eyes. Lars appears to be shaken as he didn't expect that Ash would kill anyone. I need you to keep it together. Jay hands the hammer to Darby, but the kidnappers return to the room before Darby manages to free herself, so she hides the hammer for the time being. Ash walks up to her, and tries asking her again about the car key's whereabouts. He opens Darby's phone to read the new text. He then leans closer and tells her, Your mom died. Darby cries quietly and says nothing back. And then... Apparently, the text Darby sent to 911 earlier came through, and the police are headed to the scene right now. Ash and Lars are now desperate. Ash then pulls the child's arm, and aims the nail gun to her wrist. Seeing this, Darby gives in, and reveals that the car keys are buried in the snow outside the bathroom. Ash hands the gun to Lars while he goes to retrieve the keys. It is clear that Lars is deeply shaken, and doesn't like all the violence going on. Therefore, Darby comes up with a new idea. She tells Jay to walk up to the light switch and turn it off, because she knows that Lars isn't violent like Ash, and would not harm Jay. Though afraid, Jay does as she asked, while Lars begins to panic and yells at Jay to sit back down. Darby takes this opportunity to take out the small bag of cocaine in her pocket, and snorts it to numb the pain. Once Jay manages to switch off the lights, Darby uses this opportunity to pluck the nail out of her wrist, while Lars struggles to apprehend Jay. <sighs> Ash re-enters the room to find Darby holding Lars at gunpoint. Ash looks nervous, it is clear that he cares about Lars. Jay comes at him to knock the nail gun away from his grip, but then- Guilty and shaken, Ash rushes to Lars' aid, while Darby and Jay sneak outside, and enter Darby's car. Ash tries to help Lars walk it off, but... <laughs> Lars slips on blood and falls. The fall has caused the nail to impale deeper into Lars' head, effectively killing him. Now that Lars is dead, Ash is beyond furious. He steps outside and begins shooting at the car. He manages to blow a tire, making Darby lose control and crash. While Darby is still recollecting herself, Ash decides to set fire to the building. Just as Ash is walking towards Darby's car, an officer arrives at the scene, and asks him to step away from the vehicle. 
Darby is now fully conscious. She arms herself with a screwdriver and a gun. Now the officer is wary of Darby. She tries to explain what's going on, but the officer shoots her in the gut. Ash who is still alive takes the gun, and shoots the officer. He then gets up, and aims the gun at Darby. Nearby, he realizes that the officer is still alive, so he takes the nail gun, and begins shooting him until he dies. Next, he takes the officer's gun, and returns to kill Darby. But then, Darby stabs him on the throat with a screwdriver, killing him. With what's left of her strength, Darby crawls on the snow to reach for the dead officer's radio. She calls for Hep shortly before passing out. In the next scene, Darby is back at the rehab center, and we learn that it has been over a month since the incident. We see a child's drawing on the wall when she returns to her room, signifying that she has kept in touch with Jay since the incident. A nurse knocks on her door to inform her that she has a visitor. Darby walks up to the lobby, and finds her sister Devon sitting there, ready to mend back their relationship. Darby smiles in relief, and this is where the movie ends. Okay guys. That's all the recap for No Exit 2022. Thanks for watching. See you again in the next video.